five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York. Best hello everybody. This is the Ramble, and it goes until midnight tonight in the East Coast of the United States. And here I am back after quite a bit of time off, and not really a hundred percent, but I just felt I had to come on tonight and uh, and do a show. Uh, even though, uh, you know, it's not, I'm, as I say, I'm not 100%. Um, let me tell you what's happened to me. And uh, also, we're going to start the show, uh, although the, the promos still say 10 o'clock. Now i got to go change the promos. You know what I might do? I might start doing the show again at 10 and going till 11.30. Then I won't have to change the promos. I, I'd think about that, Okay. Or um, yeah, maybe maybe next week I'll go back on at 10 and then get off at 10.30, uh, uh, 11.30, and maybe we can have Jack do his show a half hour earlier, something like that. Anyway, 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 let me see here. Are we okay? Are we on? And everything is is going good. Um, uh, um, let me see here. Oh, well, we got a little com- we got commercials going at the beginning of everything now. There we go. Skip ad. Okay, we're fine. All right, we're good. Uh, okay. What 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 do I have to tell you? We're gonna go to the citizen panel sooner than we normally do. Um, but uh, it's it, I'm just trying this n- new thing out tonight. I I'm just not. A hundred percent. And let me tell you, well, in case you don't know what's happened to me, and let me say, if I sound a little addle-pated and a little little out of it, out of sorts, it's because uh, I have not returned to my normal state, all right? Here's what happened. On uh, Tuesday, I went in for the second part of my prostate cancer um, regimen. The first part was giving me... uh, uh, radiation therapy, which was uh, bombarding my prostate with uh, uh, with with uh, radiation for five different episodes. Okay, every other day for about a week and a half, and then we waited about two weeks, and uh, I was supposed to have this second part of my therapy, but then it got called off because the hospital, which is the probably getting, in my opinion, the stupidest hospital in New York, which is Mount Sinai, forgot to order the stuff that my doctor needed in order to do the second procedure. Now, the second procedure is where they place um, radioactive seeds the size of a grain of rice into your prostate, like about 100 of them in various parts of the prostate, and uh, then they, they send you home, and they say, the next day, you'll be ready to go out and just do what you normally would do. Go to work. Uh, play golf. Playing golf was one of them. I now have this intense desire to play golf. Anyway, but it ain't that easy. Uh, first of all, I, I go there and I get set up and everything. Finally, I meet with the anesthesiologist and my doctor, and they're both there before the operation. And they say, okay, well, we, I'm your anesthesiologist, and he asks all the anesthesiologist questions like, did you eat anything today? Have you drank too much water? Have you had any coffee? Blah, 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 blah. And then he says, okay, well, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to give you a spinal. And I thought I was going to be, you know, going to put the needle in my arm, call it macaroni, I don't know. Uh, put a needle in my arm and call it macaroni, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, put me out. And then I wake up, and they say, it's all over. See you later. All right? But no, he said he's going to do a spinal. And the reason they were going to do a spinal is because of my age. Uh, And um, I guess they were doing spinals on everybody that day, I think. I'm not sure. Now, I've never had a spinal, and the idea of sticking a needle in my spine kind of bothered me a great deal. 
uh, as it would uh, probably you as well if you had never had a spinal before. So we get in there, and he says, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to administer the spinal. I'm sitting up, and he, he says, just uh, be, there are going to be a couple of peels of little pinches. You know, they always say it's always going to pinch, you know, it's their, their deal. And they say a little bit of a pinch, and, uh, you know, and it feel, and he, it, it, it hurts a little bit, but he, then he jabs me again. He jabs me about four times in my spine. It doesn't hurt. The, the first one hurt more than the second one, hurt more than the third one, hurt more than the fourth one. And then they have me lie down. And all of a sudden, my entire bottom half of my body is dead. And he says, and now to make your life even more fun, he says, I'm going to give you some intravenous Valium. So he puts the drip in my arm of intravenous Valium. And I got to tell you something, I actually like that better than getting high on the, uh, on the propofol because that's only like for a brief second you get that high and then you're out. This, I'm awake, but I'm having a good time and I'm really enjoying it. And since I'm dead below the waist, I'm not feeling anything. And I, I, but what's interesting is I found out what they, you know, you think, you have these movie images of what goes on in the, you know, in the operating room while an operation is going on. Sutures, scalpel, uh, please mop my brow, uh, you know, that kind of thing, right? I'm hearing every word that's going on in that, in that operating room. And it's things like, so what are you going to have dinner tonight? Have you seen, have you seen any good movies lately? Hey, you still going out with that woman you've been going out with? I mean, they're all having this little chat back and forth. And it was nothing like I expected would go on. I would say, they would say oh, uh, nurse, please, suture, scalpel, blah, 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 blah. No. But he's doing something down there, and I have no idea what he's doing. I have an idea of what he's doing. He's actually sticking needles into my perineum and then into the prostate and then installing the... Um, uh, the said um, uh, radioactive seeds. Uh, and uh, then all of a sudden they say, okay, well, we're, we're finished. Um, and they, they take, a, I think he, he took a, an x-ray of my prostate to see that the seeds were done okay. And he says, looks good. He says, okay, we'll send you down to recovery. Now, the worst part of this was the recovery. Now, I asked girlfriend, I said, look, the, the operation is at, uh, at noon. They should be through by 1. I should be down in the recovery room by 1.30. So come about 1.30, okay? Uh, but she's always there to get early. So she got there early and was waiting two hours before they actually brought her in to see me. And I couldn't get up till I did two things. Number one, that I could stand up on my own because the bottom half of my body wasn't working and uh, also be able to take a pee. And this is where I got really, really cranky, okay? Because now I'm feeling like, okay, now if I think that they put in a catheter into me, into my bladder, so that I, I don't know, I would urinate through that while they were doing the procedure. And then after it was over, it was still in me but they weren't gonna remove it until I could move my knees, okay? So we had to wait for about an hour till my knees were working and then she yanks out the, uh, the catheter and she says, okay, your bladder is empty, start drinking water like crazy. You can't leave till you give me so much, okay? She's got a little thing, she so much, okay? And I'm going, oh God. So now I'm drinking water like crazy, hoping it will work really fast because I want to get home. I, you know, I, I, you know how what I'm saying when I say you feel better in your own bed, you know, at home, all right? Um, so I wondered about that, about, you know, about feeling better in my own bed and what it would be like if I was just there. But all of a sudden, she's got me drinking so much water that all of a sudden my stomach is starting to hurt. I mean, really, I'm in, I'm in pain. And I don't know why I'm in pain, but it's probably my bladder and it's probably too filled up. And I said, I gotta pee, I gotta pee. And she says, well, you don't get out of the bed because they've got these ankle things on my, on my legs that are throbbing, I guess, to keep the circulation going in my legs. 
And then they've got a, 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 a what do you call it, a, a, a blood pressure cuff on this hand and a needle in this hand with a drip going into it in which she is occasionally putting a painkiller because I'm having pains with my bladder. And I just finally, I just, I got really frustrated. I started screaming, get all these things off of me. Because it was really making me feel like I, I, and I was beginning to feel feeling coming back to the bottom part of my body. And my toes, I was starting to make my toes work. And I, I knew that I was getting, you know, I was, I was on the men that way. I said, I just want to go try and take a pee because it'll relieve the pain that I'm having. And she, you know, you can't do anything. We got to get you. And she's slowly taking all the stuff off of me. I mean, I was the worst patient ever, okay? But I was panicky because it was hurting and it was bothering me. And if nothing else in this entire procedure was hurting me as much as this filled bladder that wanted to urinate. And so finally she took all this stuff off of me and one thing and another. And finally I'm free of all this stuff. And she says, okay, well, go and try. And I went in and tried and it, it didn't come out at first. And then it started to come out a little bit, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and finally I got maybe that much. And I come out and I say, look, look, I went duty, you know. And she goes, okay, you can go home. But wait a minute, you can't go right home. We have to wheel you down to the front desk. <laughs> I'm going, will this never end? I just want to put my clothes on. I just want to get home and deal with, with this whole thing. And uh, finally, I, I get out of there. But that was the worst part of the whole thing, was this getting out of there. I mean, I'm, I'm going, what if I never pee? Will they ever let me out of here? You know? No, we'll just send you home with a catheter. By the way, I always thought a catheter was like, uh, oh, I don't know, like, like this, okay? I thought it was maybe like that, and then they put that in you, and then it drains your bladder. No, it's the size of a small garden hose. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I didn't want to go home with one of those. So I was so glad when I peed, I went, good, I'm out of here. And the funny part is there were like four other people had the same procedure I did. I think some did get anesthetic because they were up really fast. And others who were just in the same situation I was in, one of them had been there for eight hours and hadn't peed yet and finally peed and he left. So I'm the only one left who hasn't peed yet. And I'm beginning to worry that I'm never going to be able to. And the anesthesiologist came in to say hi, and he said, don't worry, you're going to pee. Yeah. And I did, and I left, and I don't have a catheter in me. But then, because I had the catheter in me, the first time I peed at home, it was like fire coming out of my duct, okay? Watch. They're going to they're gonna say non-monetizing for this, just simply because I'm talking about my operation. Anyway, um, uh, and, for, and blood, oh, my God, blood, oh, it was terrible. So for two days, I'm doing blood, and it's hurting to pee. And then finally, I think today is, what's today? Today's Friday, so Thursday, Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday it hurt, and Thursday it kind of hurt a, a less. And today it didn't hurt at all. But I do feel like I have to pee about once an hour, which is more than I have been. So if I'm doing this show tonight and you're talking and I have to go pee, I will just tell you to keep talking and I'll be right back and I'll go pee. But anyway, uh, it was, you know, and so now I'm radioactive. I've been radio all my life. That was being radioactive on some level, but this is on another level altogether. But I'm, uh, I'm feeling better, and, uh, but I bet what I've been feeling, and the reason I haven't been on, and I'm doing this tonight against my better judgment, uh, and who knows, I'll be, I, I hope to be doing it on, on um, uh, what is it, t Tuesday? Tuesday? A Tuesday. I hope to be doing it on Tuesday, but it's all dependent on something because I've been feeling this incredible fatigue. I mean, where I would just rather, I don't even want to put my clothes on, right? I haven't been out of the house because I don't want to walk. 
I don't like walking to the kitchen and think about making myself some breakfast. All right, that's, that's how fatigued I've felt, and I feel fatigued like that right now. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I'm sitting down, and that helps. And uh, if you may notice, I'm a little loopy, you know. But they said the reason they didn't give me the other anesthetic is they didn't want me to be loopy for a week. And I'm, I'm loopy for days. But now, there's one other thing, and I want to talk to, about it, to him about it if he calls. I finally, for the first time in my life, know what it's like to be Patrick. You know, Patrick's a person who calls us all the time, and he's a paraplegic, and he is dead from the waist down. And I know, I, you know, I mean, I, I got better, but I know what it's like. I know what it feels like, that you can't move anything in that part of your body no matter how hard you try. And uh, so when, when uh, Patrick calls tonight, I'm going to feel a certain fraternity with him, if he in fact calls at all. I don't know if he will or he won't. But anyway, what I'm going to do, and one of the reasons I, uh, I, I, I'm going to like, when we do interviews on the show now, they're going to be like 15 minutes instead of 25, except for Ronnie, or she I will do for 25 minutes. Um, but... Um, uh, uh, I, I do. I will do it so that we can get to the callers faster. So that's that's what I intend to do now. Let me open up the Skype lines. So it hurts. Still hurts a little bit in my back where the needles were, and in my perineum where the other needles went. But you know, um, it's it's all over. At least until a month from now when I go in for a CT scan which they say is not for diagnostic purposes. It is simply uh, for their records. So I guess they can see how it is. Okay, and Skype has stopped bouncing up and down. Now we'll Skype go on. There we go. It's coming on, and we are here. Okay, all right. Uh, and now, it, here we go. Uh, I want to go active. There we go, and we're open. So if you want to call, uh, we're ready to take your calls. And I'll be happy to answer any of your questions about my procedure. Whoops. Whoops. Let's, uh, who is this? Oh, ah, it's Jeff. Ah, Jeff is the first caller tonight. Hello Let's there. see here. Was Jeff, oh, yeah, Jeff already was uh, uh, last week. He was in the top spot. And so okay. there he is again tonight let me just uh, go here and uh, here comes Phil Meyer he will probably pop in in the bottom slot as soon as I um uh... wait, wait a minute come on come on uh, Phil did we lose Phil we lost Phil oh no we got Phil okay we got Phil okay and there's Phil hello Phil how are you all right. Uh, obviously, doing better than you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm I'm doing I'm doing fine. Uh, let me see here. Todd Moore is calling, and so I go to the, uh, the, the Todd Moore. Blood is uh, similar to uh, getting a biopsy. Wait a minute. I can't. I can't. Hear. Hey, hold on a second. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me get the, uh, Todd in here. Here's Todd Moore. Okay for Todd Moore. And then Jason, oops, wait a minute, we just lost Phil? We lost you? How do we lose you? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Phil is a scuba diver. Okay. There he, well, there he is. There he goes. Okay. Now, uh, Jason, are you there? No, I guess Jason's not there. Hmm. Okay, well, call call back in, Jason, and we'll uh, be happy to talk to you. What were you going to say, Phil? Oh, uh, you know, when I have a had a biopsy, uh, I peed blood for a couple of weeks. Uh, you know, in with the urine. Yes, yeah, so I, I know. I, I've had a biopsy too. Different. I had yeah. A, so, put planting the seeds. You said that you know you had blood for a couple of days, and well, that would probably uh, be normal. Uh, I, it wasn't necessarily, let me see here. There we go. There's Josh. Let me see here. Uh, let me get him on here. Josh Wheeler. 
Uh, wait a minute, there he is. Okay, we got him. Okay. Uh, let me see here, and then Kevin is calling. Okay, Kevin, are you there, Kevin? Yep. Okay, uh, uh, Josh, you're, you're, there's a fan or something going on there that's uh, not, uh, not it's, it's awfully loud. Let me see here, let me go four is Kevin, so that would be Hog Rider, and uh, then uh, Jason uh, would be in the sixth spot, which would make him, let me see here, what's his? Uh, 3 a.m. Uh, 3 a.m., is it? Yep. Wait a minute, 3 a.m., there he is, 3 a.m. Hey, you weren't just having a feedback issue on your show, were you? No. Because when I, the first time I called, I couldn't get through. I hurry up and went to gabnet.net and yeah. I hit play, and yeah. it was sound like it was like you know a loop keep on feeding back. That wow. it was a ten second delay, then the show yeah. again, and oh well, no, we weren't having any problem that way. But uh, I said no on the feed going out, then if maybe there was an issue. <laughs> Must have been you. Yeah. Oh wait a minute, Todd Moore calling back again. Uh, Todd, are you okay? All right, let me see here. Todd Moore. Is Todd there? Todd, are you there, Todd? Can you hear me? Huh. Hmm. I don't think you can limit the length of the show. It takes so long to get everybody on that uh, well, no. it won't be like the conversation. Well, let me see here. Todd, are you there? No, he's gone. He, 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 here we go. Todd Moore again. And we hope that we have Todd. There, he comes. there, there we he go. There There's is. Todd. Okay, there we go. What happened, Todd? Well, I was having that same sound problem like I had before. Oh, okay. But you're not having it now. Um, I never have it right in the routine moment, but yeah. I usually have it in yeah. a little bit. On top of everything, my eyes have been burning. So that 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 adds to it. You're starting to feel the burn? Huh? Yeah, I'm sorry to start with one. Well, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, right. I'm feeling the burn. Yeah, uh, Bernie. Ah. Yeah, well, yeah. don't go yay yet. <laughs> it may Bernie's be too, in Detroit tonight. It, it may be too early to go yay, Bernie. Uh, <laughs> you know, let me see here. Let me get Tony in here. Let me see here. Tony, Tony, Tony. Tony, Tony. But, oh, there he is. Webhead. I always have to. If you people would just put your real names in there, and I wouldn't have to worry about this. Yes, uh, yes, Todd. My real name is Todd Moore, a.k.a. Magic, sir. I just wanted to apologize that I haven't been on in a while because my truck was stuck in the shop for uh, many of days, and it cost me a whole lot of money. Yeah. Uh, this is the first day being out of the shop that I'm able to be in my truck, and it was horrible. But I don't want to complain or cry about it, but I just wanted to explain why that I have not been on the show. And well, my, I've been yeah. trying to be on the show a lot. No, no, that that's fine with us. Anytime we can get you to call Todd, it's fine. You know, don't hey, feel. Hey, just be glad your truck wasn't in the chop shop. Yeah. But I like pistol Phil. Yeah, my my uh, my body was in the shop, and uh, and and it cost me a fortune too because these copays are killing me. You know. What happened? Huh? What happened? Well, I I had an operation. He had you his had prostate turned into a garden. What? You had the surgery you were supposed to have, right? Yeah, right, right. My yeah. dad had that. He's 80. So I know, he I know. Did he do, did but, he do good a good job? But I, I, what I'm beginning to find out is that insurance isn't exactly insurance because there are a whole bunch of co-pays added to uh, the whole thing. Wouldn't it be nice if we had uh, universal health care? Well, yes, of course. Who said that? I, 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 there's one person who's talking about universal health care. Well, it, 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 or they're all, you know, I think both of them are talking about health care. It's just they dis, they disagree on what type and what, yeah, what you know, form we, it will one take. One person says we should have the for-profit health industries yeah. still running everything. The other person says we should join the rest of the world and have single payer. By the way, I'm wiping my eyes because they've been burning the last couple of days, too. <laughs> so anyway, right. anyway, well, uh, what? Yes, Todd. 
No, I'm saying, sorry to interrupt. I was saying, let's do Cuba. We was talking about the health care. Right? Yeah. So I was saying, you know, we, you know, have some Cuban cigars, you know. Yeah, well, out I mean, now. Cuba's very good at that. They have very good health care down there. They yeah. export doctors. They export doctors. <laughs> they do. <laughs> That's well, one know. of their biggest exports. Mm. You have teeth on most Cubans? What'd you say, um, <laughs> Phil? Yeah. Did you ever see the, uh, you know, I've had a few friends that have gone to Cuba on photographic uh, uh, trips. Yeah. And uh, the Cuban people seem to have really bad teeth. So do the British. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I guess it, they both have yeah, but we're, we're talking about health care. We're not talking about dental care. Well, usually one follows the other. No. Uh, when you're healthy. Your teeth are not uh, falling no, out of no, your head. No, that's not true. That's not true, Phil. And you know it. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, Jason. <laughs> so here we go back to this, and I, I keep on, I've been bringing this up lately. You've talked about having uh, dental insurance be treated kind of like health insurance. Yes. And I, I was there with you because I, I admit I look at somebody differently if they're missing teeth than I do somebody who has a good straight smile, straight white teeth. You know, you look at them differently. But uh, part of me was like, you know, but is it really worth it? But then I have been going with an ordeal with a tooth of mine that's been going on for over a month now. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't eat for three days because of my tooth. It cracked on me and got infected. Oh, and it, it was horrible, excruciating pain. And how much did in. it wind up costing you? So far, it hasn't cost. Well, actually, so far, it's cost me $250 to have a root canal, a half root canal. Does so your far. union have uh, dental insurance? Yeah. That's why it's only cost me $250 so far yeah. to have a root canal. Yeah, well, I'm about ready to have a procedure in about two weeks, or no, uh, not this week, but next week, that'll cost me about $1,600 because I'm having an implant. I'm having it, it, all these things that are disgusting happen to me all at once. Yeah. That's where I'm almost debating about because my tooth is still irritating me. Even though I've had a root canal, there's still yeah. an infection in there. Yeah. I'm at the point now where I'm almost saying, yeah. you know, just pull the fucking tooth. Hopefully the you know infection will seep out through where the tooth used to be or something. And, yeah. you know, my, my mouth feels like it's all like somebody took a strap and they're wrenching my teeth all together right now. Yeah. And then I'm still a little bit numb and stuff. It's, it's yeah. Jason, did he give you an antibiotic for the uh, infection? Yeah, put me on two different antibiotics. Wow. That's dangerous if you get an infection. Well, can I say, Jason, uh, the pain that you'll go through to have an implant uh, and the amount of time that it takes to get, uh, you're better off just take the antibiotics, get yes. get your app and done with it. Listen, I, listen, already, listen, I was listen, already listen, on one yeah, antibiotic well, and then they had me on two antibiotics. We all, we, still... all go, we all go to two, one of two people whenever we're sick for advice. Uh, one is, of course, <laughs> Phil Meyer uh, and the other one is Mike Pence. The two people I go to whenever I want, you. you know, when I want medical advice. I said, should I have the prostate uh, a surgery? And Mike Pence wrote right back and said, no, believe in God. So I, I, you know, that was it. He was a carpenter. He wasn't even a doctor. <laughs> I, I, I gave Jason some pretty good advice. If you don't need to get an implant, don't. That's what I'm trying to avoid. But the guy who even did my root canal, he told me, come back in three weeks to finish it. And he said it's still 50-50 because he, he was seeing some small hairline cracks or whatever. But. Yeah, I want to keep my tooth, but it just it feels like, you know, the infection is still there. It was bad, man. I missed like five days of work because of it. <laughs> Nuts. Really? Son of a you know, I'm the type of person, you know, hmm. I don't miss work. You know, my, my, you know, attendance at work is excellent, but five days for my tooth, it was crazy. So anyway, so far, I, I haven't gotten the latest bill, but so far my bills have come to something like $60,000. Oh. Yeah, Ooh. and so I have copays. My copays are probably going to wind up costing me somewhere in the neighborhood of five or six hundred dollars. But that's okay. It's if it saves my life, it saves my life. But the copays will kill you, you right, Kevin? You betcha. <laughs> but I've got the thing that's good about me is I got the uh, secondary is my Medicare, so. The secondary is your Medicare. That's kind of my supplemental, so it's almost it almost cost me nothing. My you, copays you, are twenty bucks, and that's all I ever see. Well, you know what gets me? 
this is this is very interesting. Uh, I I thought okay, so this happens, and I, then all of a sudden I see there's a hundred dollars there that's being charged, and I call up my insurance. They say, "What's that for?" And they say, "Oh, that's for the use of the hospital." I said, "But it was added on to my visit to my doctor, my my uh, neurologist." They went, "Yeah, they charge for the hospital too." But doesn't your Medicare cover that? But it doesn't cover the, uh, the, the what, what is it, the uh, the copay, the copay on the hospital visit. See, well, you get me? Uh, yeah, I guess. Cause see, mine's a little different because I get, I got, a, I'm under my wife's insurance. Yeah. And I get, you know, regular Blue Cross copay. Yeah. And then all my other stuff is covered. All the, you yeah, know, well, they this pay is the a, this is a, and this the other is, 20% is, is This is a copay the, for my secondary. Uh, and uh, also, uh, what was it they were also charging me for? They were charging me, uh, uh, well, they, they, I, oh, I have a deductible, okay, that you have to meet every year. So my yeah, deductible, that, that, I thought, was, the first part of the year, was yeah. 250 okay? But that's for uh, medical. There yeah. is also hospital Co uh, deductible. That's another two fifty. I didn't realize that. Huh? You, you have two kinds of, of 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 deductibles. You have hospital deductible, and you have uh, a physician or medical medical. Yeah, see, I, I don't deductible. have that. Yeah, and so that's five hundred dollars. Now most people have five hundred dollars they have to pay anyway for deductible. But yeah, know. yes, Jason. See, so you should probably vote against Bernie because if he got in office and we had universal health care, that'd go away half your conversation. Yeah. <laughs> he he wouldn't be talking about anything. Show, right? <laughs> well, number one, I don't think if Bernie were elected, he would get it done. But you know okay. what? Th here's a point that I actually wanted to point out to you. Mm -hmm. You know, that how you've complained about before how Obama right away when he went to Obamacare, like gave up and just said, you know, okay, here's what we're going for. He didn't stick with this is what I'm fighting for. And then maybe I'll negotiate down to what you want. He right away gave up and went to what Obamacare is now. So maybe look at Bernie as that's what he's doing. I'm not willing to give up anything yet. This is what I'm going to fight yeah, but, for. But, if I'm uh, president, uh, then yeah. I will whittle down and I'll negotiate to get something but better. But Obamacare was uh, a compromise. You know. it, and it was a compromise before it should have ever been because they didn't try to really hard push universal health care. Well, I'll tell you who, who really screwed up. I was watching, There's a great documentary, by the way, if you get a chance to watch it on, uh, on uh, uh, Hulu. Uh, called uh, Hillary. It's four episodes, hour each, on, on Hillary Clinton. Oh. And it's very good. If you watch this, you might wind up having a whole different opinion of Hillary Clinton. When you see her whole life laid out in front of you and what she's done and the kinds of advances she's made. But I looked at Girlfriend when I was watching this and got into the whole thing about, you know, when, when, uh, when Clinton tried to get health care going... And he couldn't get it going. And his problem was he tried to do it in his first term. Too if soon. he had tried it yep. in his second term, he might have gotten it or gotten something it, close to it. It was too soon and then put her in too much control. Yeah. It, it, it looks like uh, like like uh, Phil has the fatigue tonight. He better. Why are you lying back? Did we say something you didn't like? No, you know, I just want to participate uh, in this part of the conversation, uh, I was going to just let everybody else talk and play well, back. It, and it, it wasn't because I called you Dr. Phil. <laughs> it. Huh? It was part of it. Oh, really? Oh, I was just kidding you, Phil, because every time, I, I, Phil, every time somebody has a medical problem, you have the answer for it. What? I, said, I do appreciate Phil's advice because he has experience in a lot of medical stuff. Mm -hmm. But Todd has his hand up. Well, it's uh, uh, yes, Todd. Yeah, I do got big ass hands. I just like picking on Phil. Uh, Phil yeah. darn well knows behave himself when I'm on here. Ain't that right, <laughs> Phil? What's up, dude? Mm -hmm. Hey, hands up against the wall, Todd. <laughs> really? You want to try that with me, you little punk? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I guarantee you, I'll put you up against the wall, old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I, I got bigger guns than you do. Ooh, oh, yeah. my goodness. Ooh. No, no, I'm not talking about those guns. I'm talking about real firearms, sir. Well, Phil, because if I get exhausted tonight... I'm being threatened by a black man. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to save you now? Who's going to save you? It, it, uh, Phil, Phil, Phil I, I need you because if I if I get too tired tonight, I'm turning the show over to you. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm, I, I got I'm, you back, I'm up. Mr. Alex Bennett, sir. Mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah. I got you, my friend. Yeah. You know, uh, I've been watching these YouTube things. I, I, I did a search uh, on my vehicle, and there's a lot of people that outfit it to, to live in it or camp in it. And, you know, uh, Todd, li you know, lives uh, in his truck when he's working. And, uh, you know, I was looking at these things. You can buy refrigerators, drawers that roll out, tents that go on the roof. See, uh, Phil, in appreciation of Todd, you should do an episode of GabNet from your car. Yeah, really. <laughs> in the back. Get a blow-up mattress, put it back there. And it's yeah, it's all sorts of things you can do to uh, make these things uh, comfortable and, and, and good for camping and off-road. Now, I don't like camping. Uh, but <laughs> like might, camping. might be I, interesting I, now if that's something phil and i agree about i if, if there isn't some place with indoor plumbing i'm not going there oh yeah well they got showers hey jeff do you camp toilet you <laughs> see i said do you camp or is that, yeah, is that a joke that you guys don't camp? No, I did it once or twice. What do you mean? He's down in Florida I right now. I've never camping before. No, he, he's, <laughs> falling for it again. he's down in Florida right now. That's kind of like camping. That's yeah. true. Uh, yes, Todd. I camp. Thank you. D do you I really? I love this. So, technically, I'm the only African-American individual that likes to deep-sea dive, skydive, camp and do everything else and none of you guys want to do any of that and yes and born I, and raised and in the Bronx, New York tell me tell, tell, really? tell me if there's if there's an element of racism that i'm about to say and then kevin had his hand up <laughs> but, yeah, but is, it true, is, it true, is it true is it true is it true that that uh, as in in general black people don't like swimming why is that or skiing oh. Okay, can I get this one? Yeah, Please. yeah, because you're the only black guy here. I'm not going to ask anybody else. Well, I hope not. It didn't. Okay, let me explain why. Okay. Okay. Back in the days, um, back in uh, the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, hmm? the reason being is was nobody allowed us to swim in pools oh. or anything like that. <laughs> so see. we never knew. Hear me out. Yeah. We never knew how to swim. We never knew how to learn to swim. Ah. Even in. Yeah, even um, I was in um, uh, what was it um, in Virginia, mm -hmm. and I was with with a bunch of white people, and I went in the water, and all of a sudden, <laughs> my phone dropped, and all of a sudden yeah. they were like, "Oh no, you got to get out." I was like, "Seriously? Yeah, yeah." So they don't ever want us to be in the water. I guess they think we're gonna contaminate it Wait or whatever. Minute. This this is a, this is the god awful truth in Vegas. Yeah, one time a black guy. This was back years ago. A black guy jumped in the pool, and they got him out of the pool, and then they drained it. Oh, my God. And refilled it. That's how racist people were. Yes, Kevin had his hand up, and then Jason. Yes, Kevin. Kevin, you had your hand up earlier? No, he was asking who, who does camping. Oh, and you do camping. Jason. Well, I do camping oh. in a fifth-wheel trailer with plumbing and oh, heaters okay. and everything right. else. Yeah. It's so, called glamping. Glamping. You, yes. You got to remember, I live in Detroit. Yeah. I don't lay on the ground no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, me yeah. neither. I got my high-end uh, air mattress, Queen. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be a TV involved. I got my uh, satellite and all that. <laughs> so. But I live in Detroit, man, and there is a problem, you know, with people in Detroit can't swim. And, you know, we're surrounded by water. You know, there, there's no, it's not a public pool or anything. Yeah, it's but, a beach but, but be, stuff you it can be, go it, to. The reason is, is it'd be hell to drain Lake Michigan. Okay. <laughs> well, St. Clair and Huron and. <laughs> yeah. But, 
you know, it, it, it is a, it's a problem. I don't know. It's just the parents don't take kids, you know, when they're in the inner city to the water period to learn how to swim because mm-hmm. it, it's so often you end up hearing about, you know, people in the inner city of Detroit going to the beach and drowning and stuff. It's like, it, it just, it kills me, but you know, you're surrounded by water and they don't, you know, a lot yeah. of the black people around here can't swim. Todd, well, my, mo- my mother, warming, you're screwed. Wait, wait, wait. Well, to answer his question, um, yes, a lot of that does happen. I'm from the Bronx, and yes, I go out to your place all the time, your state. I love your state, by the way. And yeah, it happens a lot of times because um, it's not about the parents not teaching us how to swim. It's like I was saying, that there's not a places that we can go to swim. No, you can't say that in Detroit. Uh, Detroit's 80% black. 80%. And I have... Well, I really can't say a whole lot because I'm on here right now about all of the people that I have in Detroit. But, yeah, um, I could say it pretty much everywhere that there's a lot of places that we might not feel comfortable because we was always trained not to go swim and go do other things. Mm. That's the nice way I can put it for Detroit. But in New York and everything like that in the past, I mean, think about it. Are we, how, okay, hold on. How many New Yorkers we got right here I'm looking at, okay? Now, when we all were in New York, how many African-American individuals did you see in the pool with you, or did you see if they were uh, they were comfortable or uncomfortable? Think about it. I'm talking about the ones there that was, I'm looking at right now. There was only one black family in my neighborhood, and they were uh, they had to be 100 years old. Uh, okay. I'm trying to think. Ergo, that, that makes them not dangerous. Yeah, exactly. Thank it was, you. and and their last name was Cotton. How how? Was <laughs> really? Yeah, um, really. I'm up one of the late bill. Bill. Yeah, uh, 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 Tony, you 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 had something you wanted to say? Yeah, yeah Walnut well, Creek for you. I forgot the name of the park that we went picnicking once. I'd have to ask my mother. It was in Long Island. And they had like a pool. It was a family pool. My mother never let us go in the public pool because she says they piss in the pool and shit in the pool. You're not going yeah, in the pool. That's, I mean, yeah, that's, just don't that's, even that's, think about it. Hey, that park is but all the cousins going Tony, in, we never went in. She's, that's disgusting in there. Tony, She's, that's a cesspool. That that's park cool. called Long Island Expressway. <laughs> I might be too, but she never let us go in. I forgot what name of the park it was. I could ask her. But she, they had like a pool you can go in. Just eat the barbecue and then we're going home. We're not going to the pool. Yeah, but yeah. You, you don't think there's chlorine in the water? Everybody, everybody, <laughs> listen. I don't want to but wait a minute. Hold on a second. Everybody pees in the pool. No. No, because you, 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 hit, you, you hit the cold water and you, you yeah. can't help there's, yourself. There's a name for that. But it's a natural reaction to pee when you hit cold water. She was like, "Well, the germs." Yeah, are is that called there. old age or something? No. Or? Oh, no. Uh, in I his guess. case, it's called prostate problems. <laughs> yeah. I've I, never I, had the urge to pee in the pool. No. Shit. You know something? Yeah. I feel good. I got to keep mine. That's so, true. You know, it's oh, been it's been you. it's been beaten up pretty good, but I got to keep mine. So far. Well, now, wait a minute. You got to keep your your prostate, Alex. Yeah, yeah. It's a garden now. They planted seeds. Well, I, yeah, they just radiated me a lot. No, I, I'll, I'll get to keep it, Phil. I, you know, they won't. Uh, I got. I got to ask though. What? When you turn off the lights, do you glow in the dark down there? Well, I pulled a little joke last night on Marjorie. Let me see if I can do it with you guys. Did you hang a mirror down there and huh? look? I said, uh, I don't really know what you know what kind of effect that this whole thing had on me. Yeah, neon light or something. Uh, huh? It, a yeah. Light? I, let me see here. Try and, and read I, a and book I said, or something. Yeah, I, I don't know if there was any problem here. No, um, you don't have to do it. <laughs> oh God! Really? Come on, man. A flashlight. Is, is, is the flashlight on? Yes. Yeah, that's my. That's where the. Uh, the now. On oh, no. Did huh? you do that to her? It's not, it is. What? Yeah. Did, yeah. did you put Ow. it down there and then and then spread your legs and show it to her? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at here. Has oh, anyone well, noticed? Well, has anyone noticed that now Alex's promos have gone to uh, fart noises? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It also said I go on at ten o'clock, but. But no, but you know, I mean, uh, 
Um, it was an adventure, I'll tell you. But I didn't have to have the, uh, the uh, 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 what do you call it? The... Uh, um, Prostate. The garden hose. What's it called? Uh, a catheter. Catheter. Didn't have, I had a catheter, but it was taken out before I left the hospital. Yeah. Well, mine was left in to allow you the re urethra to reattach because mm -hmm. they sew it up and, they, uh, and the catheter actually goes into your bladder. It, I don't know why they do it for my procedure, but it is part of the procedure. They do it and then they keep it in there until... You can move your legs. This is why I'd love to hear from Patrick tonight because I feel a certain camaraderie with Patrick because yeah, I he was... He on his Christmas tree and shit. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. I was dead from the waist down. Yeah. And I know sucks. now what that's like. That sucks. And it, really? I mean, I tried to move my feet and I couldn't move my feet. Oh, this yeah, was have, this is the worst part. They well, he, to do that for my knee surgery. Here we go with me losing my monetization tonight. But it, it was only temporary that you couldn't feel your feet. Uh, with Patrick, it's it's never going it, to change. It's never going to change. But I know what it's like. You get you get that you get that you get to know what it's like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I got to know what it was like. But one other thing happened. Kind of. When they put in the catheter, in order that I would not have pain, they also numbed the area. A nerve block, yeah. So when I'm trying, I'm trying to feel down to see if I'm I'm starting to get any feel back feeling back in my legs, and I am a little bit, and I move over and I touch my, I'll say fualum bueboy, then I won't lose my monetization. My I touch my penis, and it was I couldn't feel it. It was dead. Oh my god! And I went. The hell is this about? She says, "Oh no, they that was because they put the uh, anesthetic in there so that it wouldn't hurt." I went, "Oh, thank you, but now I I can't even feel it, and I'm used to feeling it." Well, they you want know, you to make it work. What? I started first inject today. Uh, I got Victosa, which is a new diabetes drug for me, and you have to inject it into your stomach uh, in, in the morning. And uh, oh, that's pleasant. It wasn't it's like an EpiPen, uh, and you change the needle on it. Uh, and, yeah, I've uh, been doing that one for a couple of years now. Yeah, uh, it, it was okay until I had some Tom Yum soup in a Thai restaurant this afternoon, and, and my sugar went up through the roof. But uh, they have a really Phil, low dose. why don't you just cut sugar out of your life? It's like you create, it's hard. I thought it was, you know, but I, you know, I wanted let me some be, soup. Let me be Dr. Alex. Salad. Let me be Dr. Alex for a moment. Mm. Why in the world, knowing what's wrong with you, do you keep doing sugar? It's very addictive. <laughs> yes, it's very addictive, and it's going to kill you, Phil. Yeah. And as much yeah. as we argue and we debate and you get mad at me and then you get huffy and puffy and don't talk. And then we get, uh, then we make up and all that. I, I don't want to see you not here some night because you died of too much sugar. You know? Yeah. You'll be giving a eulogy. This, uh, this new thing, uh, for one reason or another, it, you don't feel like eating as much and you're supposed to lose weight. Did you lose weight, Kevin, on your. A uh, little uh, bit. In, a little bit? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have cravings for sugar or for food? As much uh, now that you're doing it, make any it? difference. Todd no. wants to say something. Yes, Todd. Yeah, um, Phil, you really need to stop all of that crazy food you're eating. I used to be a chef, and I mean, if you want, man, whenever I get out of the truck, I can um, hook you up with some good food, and I can cook a lot of good stuff that all of it you're not gonna like, but I'm gonna love cooking it all for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, Phil. Thanks. All you got to do is, I mean, I, I, you know, I went on a, on a literally almost no carb diet, and I ate just fine. You just got to be, you got to look at the label on stuff and see if there are any carbs there, and if there are carbs, to see how many of them are from sugar and how many of them are from uh, from dietary from from fiber, and if if uh, most of them is from fiber. You know, then you got low carbohydrate stuff. You put pistachio I, nuts you can have. Uh, I eat out uh, morning, noon, and night. 
Oh. And that's the problem. Well, you can you eat know? out and you can order what's right. I, I, I went to restaurants all the time. But I, you know, I, I, I would ha- order some meat, you know, and I would order some, some greens, some lettuce and things like that. But, if, if Phil, I mean, you shouldn't have to be taking Victosa. You should be able to not be taking in sugar. And, and what uh-huh. are you doing? You're taking a drug because you don't have the willpower to not have stuff. So, oh, That's good, I'm going to go out and have a hot fart Sunday. Okay, now I'm going to stick myself in the gut with a, with a, with a, with a, uh, a medicine. I mean, come on. The doctor said. But, hmm? Kevin, uh, do you find that uh, you can control your uh, uh, sugar levels without a, a drug just by uh, eating uh, non-carb? I mean, if I breathe in the air too, too much, I, I get carbs. <laughs> yeah. Mine's a different situation. Oh. Because it, it's more related to my uh, antibiotic toxicity thing. I see. You see, I mean, uh, David Letterman. Well, Phil, had... if you went on Atkins before and lost weight and your sugar went right, you're just going to stick to it. Uh, I stuck to it for five years. But if you. Or how long ago was that? That wasn't recently. No, it was like 2005. So, and see, you know what you can do, and you know you've done it before, and you tried it recently, though, and it was working. You just, you couldn't stick to it because you like your sweets. Well, I was gaining weight recently, but I wasn't going off my diet, and I wondered why, and then it turned out it was the pills I've been taking for my neuropathy. So I've stopped taking them, and I'm losing weight again, Mm. you know. Uh, But you got to be careful because a lot of times medicine you take will cause you to gain weight. Well, and, and uh, you know, Jason's sitting there stuffing his face with Heath bars and Kit Kats. <laughs> but it's how- a nutty buddy, and I am at my lowest weight. I've actually been in a while. It's kind of weirding me out because I haven't been trying to lose weight. Really? Really? Hmm. Son of a bitch. My friend, she- my friend, friend, my friend Shecky for a while was, uh, was losing weight and not eating a lot. So the doctor sent him in for a bunch of tests, and he, in two days he had... A cyst, he had a uh, colonoscopy and a, um, what's the one that goes down your throat? A uh, oh, endoscopy. endoscopy. Yeah. And I just yeah. want, they should, they should have done them at the same time and seen if they could see each other, you know? <laughs> if they do, you got a problem. And isn't it funny, the colonoscopy goes in your end, but the endoscopy doesn't. Yeah. Okay, that's answer. a little joke. Thank you very much. Yep. It's a good report. Uh, my timing's off lately. Yeah, it is. Doesn't uh, make sense. I'm I'm surprised I'm getting through this show tonight without falling asleep. I'm surprised too, Alex. <laughs> oh, here comes Rob Alfano. Hey, Roberto. Let me see here. Hey, now we... I'm gonna hang up real quick because my my screen is all goofed up and I cannot figure out. So I want to close out Skype altogether and hey, call back in. Are you call back in? Okay, we'll leave yeah, you. Yeah. We'll leave your Two picture seconds. there. But let me right. go get Rob on the line here. Let me see here. Rob Alfano. Where is he? Where is he? What what name are you using? Oh, there he is. Okay, there we go. Boom boom. Let me see here, and then I got to go boom, and then we go like that, and there's Rob. Hello, Rob. How are you? Good. Very good. How are you doing? Fine. How are you feeling? Uh, well, I am uh, I decided to do a show tonight. I haven't been on all week because I've just been, I've had this incredible fatigue, and I still have it, but I just felt I had to do a show tonight just to say hi to everybody, you mm. know. But please excuse I've been me. listening for a bit, and uh, I heard uh, Phil talking about having a, not being able to keep his uh, carbs down. Mm-hmm. And uh, that Dr. Fung stuff, I'm telling you, yeah. I've lost 30 pounds now since the, since, uh, um, the Sunday after uh, Thanksgiving. I sent that to yeah. a nutritionist, and she loved that guy. What What is yeah, this? Uh, what, well, what is it? His name is... His name is Dr. Jason Fung, and he has a YouTube channel. And he uh, actually, Thanksgiving Day, my brother had my family over, and my cousin uh, brought a new date, and it was a doctor. And we're sitting around, and we're eating stuffing and mashed potatoes and sweet potato pie and you name it. And he's talking about this thing that he believes in to 
because uh, I was pre-diabetic, my last doctor's visit, which no diabetes is in my family, and my cholesterol is through the roof and this and that. And he said, you want to get rid of all that, just keep your carbs low and practice intermittent fasting. You can do it by giving yourself an eight-hour window in a day where you eat, and so you're fasting 16 hours a day. Or you can, you can that's, the, that's the, the way to get into it. I eat one meal a day. So I'm fasting anywhere between 20 and 22 hours um, a day, mm-hmm. and it is really, really healthy for your body. I, I can tell you, I've, I've been struggling right around uh, September. I didn't go to Germany with my wife because uh, I've been dealing with so much anxiety in my life, and I, I just, that's all disappeared. I, didn't, I had no idea that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. I think clearly now when I talk to my customers, my the, the clarity of my thoughts is, is completely different. It's, it's like I'm a different person. I mean, it's amazing. And what's, his, so, uh, what's the doctor's name? Dr. Jason Fung, F-U-N-G. Wow. Yeah. And, I... and he, has a, he has a couple of books out, and I bought one of his books on Amazon while I was in New York. I had it waiting for me when I got back to uh, Virginia uh, after the, the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Went, read through that book pretty quickly and then Sunday night that was it I had my last meal Sunday night and then I started on the the fasting on Monday and um, the most fasting I've done has gone three days without eating Um, it takes a little getting used to but you the amount of think about what human beings were designed for the way our ancestors were exactly and you don't know where your next meal is coming from you're going out and hunting it and and it's big food and big pharma that doesn't like this because there's no drugs involved and because you're not eating snacks every 10 minutes like they want you to do. There's a lot to be said for this. So I read through the book. My wife's doing it. I'm doing it. I Feel found, I found, I found the greatest snacks with absolutely zero carbs at Costco. And I usually didn't like this particular snack because there was never one that was really good. But it's this brand, and I can't remember the name of it now. Autumn um, Gold? No, of pork rinds. Oh, oh, oh. My, my, well, my wife said, I can't eat pork rind because I, I, I think it, about it's fried fat. And it, I just... But if you actually look at pork rinds and you see the calorie count on it, mm. the calorie count is low. Everything is low about it. it, it the only thing that's high is sodium. Yeah. You know, and, and actually, I can't like I, I love pork rinds. I only love my better made. It's a Detroit brand pork rinds. They are so fucking good. I can't Anybody remember the name of this rinds, stuff. I can't. I, but, I can't. Even but these are very the good. These are very good. You know, I, I just know what I'm eating. It's like fat that's been deep fried, and I I, I gag on it. Yeah. No, you should try some better made pork rinds. It's man. not that. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, you know what? It's not the taste. Because it, it tastes, it's just like a crunchy stuff. By the way, by it's, the way, it's light and fluffy. It's, it's not greasy food. at all. There's a Filipino co- a food called lechon, which is That's basically uh, a f- pork and f- fried, and uh, I love it. Hey, hey, <laughs> the black guy's got his hand up. Talk, he, they know about <laughs> pork. Go ahead. I don't eat pork. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, no, I, I, I choose not to. I'm not Muslim or nothing like that. I just refuse to eat that. I used to be a chef, and I'm really good with like seafood. And uh, my favorite thing that I used to do was cod. But as far as the pork grinds and stuff like that, yeah, they're really good. But yeah, they, they're they're a clogger. They, yeah. they really mess you up inside. And uh, I would I would advise. All of us for our ages to just leave that alone. You know who we have not Actually, if you look at the nutritional facts on pork rinds, mm-hmm. it's almost nothing except for it is it's high in sodium because you know the way they make them. But pork rinds, the, the cholesterol, okay. the saturated hold, hold fat, on, hold, really low. Hold on, everybody. We haven't heard from two people tonight. I haven't heard, I think, a word out of Josh tonight. It's quiet. Is there anything that uh, that you want to talk about? Uh, so far, what you've been talking about, no. I mean, <laughs> oh, okay. What, what area could we get into that you would be interested in talking about tonight? Uh, I mean, there's a few things. Like, I mean, what, I mean, whatever everybody wants. I don't want to tell everybody. Uh, they have to talk about anything else. Yeah. I mean, you got anything political? Come on, let's go. 
Has anything <laughs> political been going on? Elizabeth Warren, uh, <laughs> oh. a sore, sore loser. Uh, you know, uh, she's saying that uh, it's because she's... <laughs> That uh, uh, she, I, I think it's because she's not very likable, but uh, yeah, I think America's sexist. Well, I think there is a definite sexism when it comes to electability. But I also do think if she was more of a centrist, she would have. Amy Klobuchar didn't have it. If she was more of a centrist, and uh, she would actually have been probably doing a lot better. But <clears throat> she wasn't genuine. And 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 oh you know. no, I think she is very genuine. Yeah, well, why just stop so many I, I think she's genuine. I just don't like what I see. You know, I'm not. Bernie. She just well, didn't. Why? What do you not like? And I, that that's what kills me. You say you don't think Bernie is genuine, or you don't think he's sincere, but he's been well, the no, same person no, uh, for the last forty uh, years. Let, 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 oh, yes, he's been the same thing for the last forty years. And from what I understand, from even. Other politicians who are Democrats, I've seen interviews with them who say, personally, Bernie is the world's biggest asshole. Who fucking cares? I'm an asshole. Well, I'm still so a lefty. Trump. Uh, still Trump. I'm a fucking big ass asshole. prick. Trump. People fucking hate me. They think I'm a dickhead, but I'm still a fucking lefty. <laughs> I'm still a progressive. But we like you. Bernie, Bernie is, you know what Bernie I love is? Bernie. Bernie, Bernie is, um, uh, uh, who's the guy? Who was the guy in Network? Um, oh, Network. Yeah, um, I am not going to take it anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's who he is. You know. Yeah. Yes. Uh, t <laughs> what, what? What? Rob? What are you moving your head like that Bernie, for? Bernie is no different than Trump on the other side. He's a he's a radical. What happened? He's to experienced. Centuries? He has uh, experience. He's you know he what? may have experience. Okay, so he's not going to be making the same gaffes that Trump is and being a dumbass and no, no, doing no. shit that he's not supposed to do. No, 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 I'm not comparing him to Trump in that regard. I'm comparing him to Trump in his views. Trump is radical right, and Bernie is radical left. Okay, and isn't it time, not though? In, no, it's not time to be it, it radical. It is time, though, because we've been doing it their way for so fucking uh, long, and it's not and, working. And, and and that's you're exactly the re that you, that's exactly true. What you're saying is exactly true, and that's the reason why people don't want centrists. People who want who have common sense. Uh, to me, I watched every Bloomberg because I'm not paying attention to the news. But we're getting bombarded with the not anymore because he's out. But the Bloomberg. Oh, the still guy on. at least has a mind. <laughs> The guy, the guy at least is 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 not all left. He's not all right. He's some, you know, it's not all. No, where, yeah. What you know, is he Trump, today? Trump wants to take everything away, and and Bernie wants to give you everything. So uh, there's got to be some it's middle ground. Most everything. Americans are in the middle. Most mm -hmm. Americans are in the middle. They're not one or the other. Why is it that we are going to have two candidates who are going to be polar opposites? What kind of crap? And he'll get nothing done as a president because the, the it's just like Trump. He's not going to get anything done now with a with a Congress. Even I don't care if we get the Senate or not. If he gets reelected, he's not going to get anything done. And Bernie is not going to get anything done either because he's not even a Democrat. So the Democrats aren't going to yeah. give him any real uh, cooperation either. Todd's got Todd's his hand have up. Heart attack if you don't call yeah. him. Yes, Todd. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay, I agree with my man on everything about Bernie. The thing that I notice about Bernie is he's trying to do something different than a lot of other people, which is all that's great, and I commend him about that. And, yes, everybody here that knows me knows I'm a Bernie, a Bernie Sanders supporter, okay? Yeah. But I do see and I understand how that uh, everybody went to Biden and they're trying to do what they're doing, just like they did last time when Bernie was going against Hillary. So I got news for everybody here on this panel. And um, and uh, um, uh, what's his goofy ass name right there? Um, the Phil? the one with the guns. Uh, what's it? <laughs> My man, Phil. That's it, right, Phil. Okay, look, <laughs> I'm not following you, Phil. <laughs> I'm not doing that. What I am is now not a Democrat. And I'm not a Republican. Um, I'm neither. I'm nothing, no more. Not, no, no. I used to be, or uh, whatever, whatever my dad and my family are. I, I refuse to be anything. 
Um, Phil, uh, uh, you said some very nasty things about Elizabeth Warren. Why do you need feel a need to say nasty things about Elizabeth Warren since she isn't running anymore? Are we because she's a nasty person. She's nasty. The eyes. Oh, come on, but you, 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 here you go, you back Trump. There's nobody nastier than Trump. Politics mm. aside, how do you even, how do you even say that with a straight face, knowing that Trump is like the nastiest person alive? And I'm I not talking think... about anything. Oh, come on! He he fights with anybody. He'll call women anything. Uh, uh, fat uh, let, me, let me I, I, let me let me give him I an example. That. Well, my, Phil, let me give you an example of, of, of that. Um, today, uh, she's out of the race, right? She's gone. She's finished. She's finito. Trump is a asked about it, and he goes after Elizabeth Warren. Oh, she's a terrible, horrible person. I mean, now's the time to go, hey, she's not in the race anymore. Let's move on. You know, he but no, he feels he has honest. to like kick somebody when they're down, when that's they're not any threat to him or anything else. He's not a quality person. Doesn't really have any. He's, he's not a quality human. He's just not. I don't care if he had the. I don't care if he was a Democrat. I wouldn't. He's not a quality individual. I don't Look understand what he does how with America. Dead I don't understand how America has allowed him to call her Pocahontas. <laughs> if she claimed that she was part black, would it be acceptable for him to call her Aunt Jemima? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Phil, what's your answer to that? Uh, he didn't call her Aunt Jemima. She claimed to be an Indian, and she wasn't. She said she's Native American. Did so, you hear what he said? She's she's phony. She used. She uh, used. Okay, hey, Phil. Phil. And Trump. And Trump. She used to her advantage to get a job. And uh, and she, she wasn't is a <laughs> citizen of the Cherokee Nation. She is not. Yes, she is. Like, she is born and raised Oklahoma. She's a citizen. I believe it's the Cherokee Nation. But Phil, just 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 hypothetically, say she said she was part black and it was proven that it was wrong. Would it be okay for him to call her Aunt Jemima? I don't think that uh, he would have gone there, but he, he had a, but, but it's okay for another nationality. It's okay because it's not a black person. It's a brown person. And why is it? Why is, well, people here, stole it here's from one other question. Of her because of that. Here's one other question she I have, lie. Phil. Phil, she why lied. is it, Phil, why is it that he always seems to go after women harder than he does against men? Hey, if I would have said... That I claim that I'm a German Shepherd. Wait, a minute, wait. And, uh, you didn't answer uh, and, my question, ooh. Phil. I asked you a question. He saw I me. asked you a question, Phil. Shepherd. But Phil, I asked you a question. He saw me he'd bark. Uh, All right. Uh, What's uh, wrong, Phil? With you? Phil, I asked you a question. You're not answering <laughs> it. Ask, ask again, because I thought I did. I it, it, now I forgot what it was. Yes, Todd. I got you, Alex. He said a German Shepherd. You know what my father fought. In he fought against the Nazis, and then you're you gonna say a German, German Shepherd? Shepherd Watch what you say, bro. Say, say something again. Say, I dare you. Say it again. Eggs and a tail. He does. <laughs> really? Really? But then, no, but we would go with the black and this, that, and the third with the. That. You're overly sensitive. You 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 are waiting and baiting and waiting for somebody Phil, to. Phil, hey, Phil, be, be mm -hmm. honest. Do you not I'm think not that that's racist? Baiting. Do you not think it's racist for him to call her Pocahontas? Of course it is. So I have, why, why is I have that acceptable? Native American in my family. Be because it, it's not a certain race, so it's acceptable. So would you say that Trump is would, himself up for it? Would you say Trump was a racist then? Would be. Everybody's racist. Uh, okay. Everybody is racist in one way or another. But to be Everybody, that late, no. But some people are overtly that, racist, and other people have racist concepts oh, in them that they don't false. understand. Are racist? Would you agree with that, Todd? So, yeah. Say what's on their mind. They, they they hold it in, and they look at you in the face and say, "Oh, I, you know, you're a Jew." But you know what? You're done talking about it. You but know. you know what, Phil? If the person who's bagging your grocery at the grocery store says, oh, you're a fucking Jew, but I'm still putting your groceries in the grocery bag and doing the service right, <laughs> that's it where it, it should would. be and not sitting there and be like, hey, Jew boy, fuck you. I ain't putting your groceries in the bag. If you want to bag my groceries, they usually bag. 
it would be very interesting if we had a president who was on the right, on the left, and he was as outspoken and racist and made comments the way Trump does. How Phil would feel about that? <laughs> I say sticks and stones break my bones, but words will never hurt. Me. Oh, come but on, Phil. Gas chambers you, will. Sensitive. <laughs> Yes, no, I'm, I'm, not about Todd, I'm not talking about Todd. Hold on a second. Todd has his hand up. Todd. All right, let me explain something. And if I believe correctly, I'm looking at everyone on the panel. Mm -hmm. And I do mean everyone, including your fucking ass, Phil, too. <laughs> that we all were in a situation that we were all in a situation that was horrible or incarcerated or treated, treated like slaves in one form or another. Okay, mm -hmm. at different points in time, we're all American, we're all Democrats or fucking Republicans. Okay, we're all we're we're all the shit now. Okay, so you know what? Let's all just get along and um, uh, we can get what? your punk <laughs> ass. I grab by the pussy president. Fuck up out of here because he needs to go. Because I really I, I really don't like him. By the well, way, there's a guy. There's a guy I here. You, I love you, Phil, but I don't like your boy. Don't they grab you by the pussy, and I know, can't get away with that. I can't I'm, get away with doing that because if I bro. grab somebody, I'm getting incarcerated. <laughs> Look at all of them put up. I get incarcerated. I'm going to jail. I can't do the same thing that the president of the United States not does. Not celebrity. He said that he could do I that, or people. I don't want to because so. I am not like the bad shit, okay? Phil, not quit. Not you know, I, re I really get disappointed with you in, in uh, uh, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, trying to excuse bad behavior. Yeah. You know, not, uh, you know, when he does something bad, you should be willing to say, hey, that really doesn't make me feel comfortable. But I can't believe you feel comfortable with everything this jerk you know, says. Uh, you know, we had a couple of Republicans that ran for president that every time somebody would hit them, they would just take it. They wouldn't fight back, and they ended up losing. Trump is the kind of guy that says, if you hit me, I'm going to hit you back ten times harder, and you guys just don't No, like you know what that it. is? You know, you know what, you know what, the, you know, you know what that, you know what that's the mentality of, Phil? A thug. A thug. A thug. <laughs> well, I, I like that thug. And I like the fact that he stands up. And you, he's like not a you like thugs. You like thugs. But then you, but then you turn around. But Phil, but then you, but but Phil, then you turn around and you judge Elizabeth Warren, saying she's a nasty person. Yeah. If if you, if if that's yeah. okay on one side, why isn't it okay for her? Because she's because a woman. She's whining. I, well, See, women whine. Is, women whine. Uh, no, let, let me tell you something. What she's whining about is that she's a woman, and okay. therefore she's a fair <laughs> chick. Okay. Well, you know, so what? But she's Phil, whining. it's absolutely it's absolutely true. I watched this documentary tonight. I'll, I'll get to you in a second, there, uh, Todd. Yeah. Uh, is that uh, the one that Lynn said that he had a he had a uh, screw Monica Lewinsky in order to uh, you know get over his depression. That right. you you have to watch the whole thing to find out exactly what he said, Phil. But anyway, they did talk about that for the first time, and and he he did apologize basically to Monica Lewinsky and felt sorry for what happened to her, and that it, it was sad that the the press you know jumped on her and everything like. That. But anyway, in this documentary, they show where as a woman running for office. Uh, they were doing things to her they would never think of doing to a guy or saying to a guy. I mean, people in the I audience with a poster that read, iron my shirts, you know, crap like that, you know, and which is it, 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 it were the Trump fans, believe it or not, who were doing that sort of thing to her. And it was it, it, it was a very sexist uh, attitude about her running for president and that she couldn't win because she was a woman. Anyway. There are women leaders all over the world. There's a woman leader. Except of for a, in America. Except in America. The third highest ranking person in government is a woman, Pelosi. And uh, the third, you know, the third, third, but not the first. Well, it just takes time. Oh, you know, really? You had a Catholic president. You had a black president. 
Uh, you almost had a Jewish president. You know, well, you'll never have a Jewish president. You'll have a you'll have a female because president. Because all the Jews will vote against him. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Alex. Most Jews are liberal pansies, and they'll yeah. probably vote. For what? God. Most of the Jews in this country are ashamed to be Jewish, and they don't stand up yeah. and fight like well, the Israelis yeah, do. Yeah, but it, you, my, you, my father always used to say, you know what the definition of a kike is? A uh, Jew that's left the room. Yes. <laughs> a nice Jewish gentleman who's left the room. That same joke can be said about the N-word, but I wasn't going to do that here. Because... <laughs> well, it's bad, Alex. Go ahead. Don't get scared. Sir. Yeah, he doesn't want to lose his monetization. You know, you know, you know, do you lose your monetization for using that word? No. Probably, yeah. I'm family. What if you are talking about your knee <laughs> growing? Huh? What were you saying? So, mm. What if you are talking about your knee growing? My knee growing? It's. <laughs> well, I always, I always found Negro a very fun. I, I always found the term Negro a funny term because when I was a kid, that's what I was taught to call black people was a Negro. If I called a Negro a black person, they would be upset by that because that term was not considered positive at that time. Now, this is way back in the Stone Age, okay. Yeah, but then you have some terms out there for organizations that still exist, like the United Negro College Front Fun. and the NAACP, NAACP, which stands for Colored People. Yeah. So, I mean, right? It's very odd that those, those yeah, organizations— Yeah, I, I never—I could never figure out why the NAACP didn't change their name, you know? Because if you go up and say, uh, if, I, if I go to Todd and I say, Todd, you're one of those colored people, you know? Hey, yeah. Yeah. But uh, yet, I guess I'm colored. I don't. I don't. I, but I, 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 really don't I always found Negro a funny, a funny term. MD forty forty. I found I found Negro a funny term because it was always the conciliatory term that they used to use, you know. Uh, but yeah. uh, and uh, you know, I mean, it, back in those days, a black person was a Negro. That's what you called them. You didn't call them anything else, you know. So. Times change, but hey, people want to be called something <laughs> else, then you go along with that because you honor them as human beings. Yes, Todd. I claim German Shepherd, you know? Yeah. See the tail? Todd? Todd. Uh, yeah, thank you, Alex. Um, to answer the questions about the any of the thing that's African or the, the thing with the all the other stuff, what the lovely part with me was um, a lot of people don't know they really didn't ever really care to ask. Mm -hmm. I'm a third degree black belt. Mm. Um, I, I, I fight in different forms. Um, I'm very familiar with Phil, with the, the deep sea diving. I don't know. I maybe thought he does some skydiving, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm, I don't so, jump airplanes. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, well, good to know. Okay, well, then that's me. Jump in the um, ocean, but not in the air, airplanes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Um, well, but I do a lot of things different than a lot of African-American individuals do. So when I hear, you know, uh, about different names and stuff like that, I never get upset or get I never get mad. Uh, I'm from New York City, the Bronx. I miss it. Uh, unfortunately, my father, retired police officer from New York, Decided to move to Virginia, and now I'm stuck there. We're in was, Virginia. Was stuck, yeah. Was stuck in Virginia. Yeah, Virginia, uh, Chesterfield. Chesterfield, Virginia, where my dad's at. You're I'm two an hours over away from me. Exactly. I'm an over-the-road truck driver. And I broke down three days in Texas, Dallas. Ooh, real nice right here. Only problem is, man, there's a lot of women that I'm trying to be a gentleman about. Oh, man, when I was broke down, oh, bro, bro, I was, all y'all was with me. You would have seen these lovely ladies. Yeah, okay, the ones that don't have women or wives, yeah, yeah, please, sit there with me for a minute. I've never but, been broke down, but I've been broke ass. <laughs> well, you're still a broke ass, and you are broke down, so you could have hang and chill, smart ass. How's that? And I still want my weapon. None of this is making sense to me. I want you to know that about these women in Dallas and stuff, you know. Thank, thank, thank you. 
thank you very much for helping me out, Alex. You didn't grab him by the... I'm not disrespectful, sir. Mm, okay. No. See? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what? You grab well, him on the... Ooh, you know, one? to change the subject a little bit, to keep it on Todd, though, uh, I saw this truck that oh. people... Uh, it was a uh, Freightliner, and the it had a 20-foot living space in it with a kitchen, bathroom, shower. It looked like an RV inside. It was beautiful. Super track. Yeah. Uh, Half a million dollar super tractor. It has a shower. Yeah. Uh, uh, it has a shower, bathroom. Uh, it has a big uh, bed. Side. Conversion. Yeah, yeah. Flat screen on the wall. And let me guess, it had a big chandelier on the top. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It's pretty neat, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get one of them, but I don't have half a million dollars to get one. <laughs> Just write a check. Yeah. Well, I live in so, the truck I have now. All my stuff. Is with, with three minutes left, what do you oh. think about Chris Matthews bailing? He was fired. Uh, yeah, he yeah, was fired. Fi fired he bailing. Said, what did he say that caused the uh, uproar? I really don't know, but I think that it's kind of crappy of MSNBC after, what, 30, 40 years of service to that yeah, network exactly. to suddenly dismiss I was, I was dismiss working him. the elections, and I came back to find out about it, so yeah. I didn't know much yeah. about it until today, really. I got yeah. this new headgear from the uh, from the hospital. It's very it's pretty. Let, let very me take it home. Yeah. Yeah. Keeps the shine away. Yeah. yeah, it sure does. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. No, we should we we'll probably talk about that next week. What they did to Chris Matthews, I think, was terrible. I think it was. Well, they let him say goodbye. Yeah, but I mean, well, he, didn't he walk chose walk to walk off. The but he did. He chose to walk off the show. Well, but they let him have his peace. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think I, he was just trying to save his pension. Yeah, but I, I just think it was, there was something very wrong with that. Yes, Todd. Yeah, was. Two I enjoyed seconds. watching him. Yeah, that sucks. And I hope they decide to figure out how to get his ass back or try to fix that. But I just wanted to say, um, hopefully you guys will be nice if I can get my father at 80 years old come on here and join the panel if it's okay with you guys. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try to see if I can get him to come. Yeah. He's more political than I am. Oh, okay. Hey. <laughs> if you're uh, He's not going to like you, Phil. I'm just yeah. letting you know. <laughs> I don't know. He's going to be gotcha. real nasty. Okay. You, okay. okay. We've, we've, only got a, we've only got a minute yet left before I, yeah. before I roll the theme. Oh, uh, but, a minute uh, left? Yes, but I want to say a few things before I go. Uh, uh, Jeff, do you have any last words? Yeah, I wanted to say one thing. Yeah, you guys were talking about Trump and the problems with some of these presidential potential people. Yeah, the one thing that I don't like about Mr. Trump is he's a fucking liar, yeah. a continuous liar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's a lie between friends? Come what, on, what's, oh, a, come what's on. a lie between <laughs> friends? And uh, also, Josh, anything? Any last words? You haven't said anything tonight, really. No. Uh, I mean, a little off topic for me for a while, and I, I don't know, certain certain things it's hard to have a conversation with certain people about because if you don't think what they think, they're just going to fucking tell you you're supposed to be thinking what they're thinking, so it's sometimes it's not worth uh, our... That's when you, you know, tell them to fuck off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey. exactly. And that's what happened to his monetization tonight. <laughs> yeah, well, my monetization went to hell. Uh, but Josh, uh, when the uh, next time you call, I will give you like ten minutes of your own. How's that? Without Please, anybody okay. being able to judge what you're saying. Uh, Jeff, thank you. T uh, Todd, great talking to you. Phil, great having you here. Josh, always good having you here. Uh, not not enough for my blood. Kevin, thank you so much. Jason, have a nice night. Uh, Tony, good seeing you here. And Rob, always wonderful seeing you here. Uh, everybody, would you give them a big wave goodbye and I'll wave back at you, okay? Nobody Get some rest, feel better. better. Okay, I'm going to try and be back here next week. Uh, yes, hopefully next week I can come back and, and be my full self once again. Uh, this show is over. And uh, so is the citizen panel, and I am shutting down my Skype so that Jack Bishop can use it next on the intersection, which is next over most of this same gab net. 
As I say, I will see you perhaps at 1030 on Tuesday if I'm feeling up to it, and I hope that I will be. And in the meantime, everybody, have a nice weekend. And as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>